Welcome, everybody, to the Falcons' final whistle podcast. I'm Scott Baer alongside Chris Rim, and we are at MetLife Stadium hours after the Atlanta Falcons came through with a clutch come from behind 17 to 14 victory that marks the team's first win of the season. You'll notice that our trio is down to two. Tori McElhaney, Atlanta Falcons beat reporter and analyst at a wedding with her family uh, back at the ATL. And uh, she was not the bad luck charm that that prevented this victory previously. Uh, it was just a matter of clutch performance on the field. Chris, we saw a lot of good play from the Falcons in the fourth quarter. Yeah, for sure. I mean, from Kyle Pitts' catch to Cordero Patterson's clutch play, we saw a come-from-behind win and just clutch play overall. Yeah, and you know what else is clutch? The fact that we have a new sponsor on board, Microsoft Windows 11. A big thank you to them, the official operating system of the NFL and the Atlanta Falcons. The all-new Windows 11 is here to bring you closer to what you love, like the Falcons' final whistle post-game podcast. Learn all about the awesome new features of Windows 11 at windows.com. And by this point, this is our third final whistle podcast episode. You guys probably already know the format. We're going to break this thing down in four five-minute quarters, and we're, and we're going to talk about a bunch of different topics, including one that you brought up to us on Twitter, starting with exactly what happened in this game and moving down to what this game could mean for the Falcons moving forward as they get, again, their first win of the season, one and two. It was clutch. It was dramatic. It was fun to watch, and it's going to be super fun to talk about as we start the first quarter. We've got five minutes on the clock, Chris Rim, to talk about the really interesting play of Kyle Pitts, who was not involved in the offense at all through three quarters to the tune of zero yards and zero catches on zero targets, and then comes through and is a pivotal player in this fourth quarter comeback. What did you make of his day as a whole? Uh, because when it mattered most, Kyle Pitts definitely showed up. Yeah, I think through the first two weeks, we saw Pitts gradually come into the threat that we expect him to become. Last week, he had 73 yards. The first week, I think he, he had a couple catches, but not maybe like 40 yards. And this week, I think people expected to see him take another step and maybe even reach that 100-yard barrier with you know with this defense. But we saw the complete opposite. We saw Lee Smith get three targets. <laughs> right. Through three. Lee Smith, not – Great guy, you know, throwback dinosaur. Uh -huh. But Lee Smith is a blocking tight end. You know, he's traditionally – he had four receptions last year and the year before that. His career high is ten receptions. So wow. it's a little bit odd when you see Lee Smith with three receptions and Kyle Pitts with, with, without a target. It would be different if he had six targets, no receptions. That's different. But we weren't even tr trying to, to seemingly to get him involved. And, and I think – you know, Arthur Smith mentioned post game that you got to give the defense some credit, and Matt Ryan also mentioned post game that they were doing things like because Calvin really started out really hot, and then they they began doubling him within the zone, as Matt Ryan mentioned. And then with Kyle Pitts, he was seeing a cornerback or a linebacker, and then a safety over top. So I yeah. guess that played a role. But man, I think the the biggest thing that we saw on Twitter and that fans were talking about was where is Kyle Pitts. I think when you draft a person, especially a tight end, number four overall, you can't can't have him in in his three point stance that he perfected since high school the yeah. whole game. He has to be out there catching passes and scoring points for you. So, and we saw that in the fourth quarter. Quick, he changed mm -hmm. the game in one quarter. So, I, I thought it was an interesting strategy to not you know try to call something up to get him involved. And then in the fourth quarter, we see we saw what he can do when he just touches the ball, and even when he's not touching the ball, getting past pi calls. Those guys on Twitter are good <laughs> with Photoshop, right? Yeah. <laughs> we saw one picture of Kyle Pitts on a milk carton in the third quarter. Yeah. Where like, where did Kyle Pitts go? Why did we draft this guy? Well, we saw in the fourth quarter why, why? you draft him. Yeah. Because not only did he have some important catches, including that fourth quarter, I'm sorry, the, on that final drive, he gets the 24, 25 yards to set up the game-winning field goal. Also, that pass interference play, just by his presence of being there, causes that contact, helps set up that Lee Smith throwback dinosaur touchdown. <laughs> I love that Lee handed the ball to an offensive lineman because offensive linemen never get to spike it. Oh, Lee Smith never gets to spike right. it either, right? <laughs> and Take, your right. <laughs> Take your moment. Take your moment. <laughs> just a humble guy, a throwback dynasty. That's who we like. Said he likes to party with. Yeah. So yeah, I think just and and you see by just by just being by just throwing a target his way. He doesn't have to always catch the ball, but just give him a shot. 
especially in the red zone, because you saw, you know, they were grabbing him because he's so big. He's 6'6", 245 pounds, and he runs a 4'4". It's hard to stick with that guy. So I think just giving him a chance, and and I think moving forward, Arthur Smith and, and Matt Ryan and, and, and the offense, they'll, they'll figure out ways to get Kyle more involved earlier because you, you have to. Yeah, if you go back to that preseason finale against Cleveland, he played one snap. It was a design play where he goes into the flat. He gets hit in stride. He turns it into a 25-yard play or something like that. Those are the types of things where even if it's just something to get the guy a touch, and this isn't us criticizing Arthur Smith's play calling. It was obviously very effective, and it's been innovative. But getting guys touches early, yeah. I think, can be helpful, getting them into the flow of the game. And, yes, he said it's disrespectful to the Giants' defense, so we're just going to go straight at one of the weapons if they're working so hard to take him away. But this is a game they also played without Russell Gage, right? right. They were down one of their top weapons, and we, we saw what happens yeah. when Kyle Pitts is a factor. When you just throw at him, the possibility of like of a flag gets in there. Um this guy about the should they or shouldn't they have drafted a thing. Of course they should. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. But you see these windows, like these opportunities. He's just such a dynamic exactly. playmaker yeah. that you just have to go to him. And he's so fun to watch. Right. He's yeah. so big. He's so entertaining. Uh, like, what was your favorite Kyle Pitts moment? I think it was that catch at the end where he put them in field position in the 20. Well, actually, maybe it was the pass interference just because he's so big and, and guys can't contain him. But I think, yeah, like you were saying, there are certain players where sometimes you just need them to touch the ball and great things happen. Yeah. Sometimes you have to break your game plan or whatever it is to get your best guy the ball and put him in space to do well. So that's what I th- think they need to do more of, and we saw what you could do today. With one second left, Chris Rim comes <laughs> and locks it in at five minutes exactly as we move on to quarter number two. And in the second quarter, we are taking a Twitter topic coming from Stimmy Turner. Stimmy Turner. I'm curious if that's your real name. Please <laughs> please let us know. If it is, I love it. Uh, and he wanted to talk, to hear us talk about the comeback, right? That the Falcons have scored, what, once heading into the fourth quarter. Yep. And then they found a way to score on that Lee Smith touchdown. And then they found a way to go ahead on the uh, Young Way Koo 40 yard field goal. By the way, right through the middle, right through clutch the middle. as it gets. Why don't we start at the end since we just mentioned him? Uh, Youngway's from New Jersey, mm-hmm. right? And you asked Arthur Smith, does it make you a little less nervous when you like when you have a guy like that who's been so clutch? Yeah. And he's like, he didn't say it directly, but yeah, yeah. basically, the answer yeah. is yeah. I mean, was there any doubt in your mind what he was going to, to do at that moment? Yeah, I felt like it was almost. Like there was like no. I, once I saw where they were, I thought, okay, the game, once Kyle caught that pass, I was like, okay, the game's over. Right. Because I, I just young, young way's been so good over the past two and a, and a half seasons. It's all, it's almost like automatic when he's within that range, and even when he's over fifty, it's, it's still, you know, kind, kind of automatic. He was perfect from that range last year. So yeah, and 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 his coach, his longtime coach from high school, Pat uh, Sempier. I uh-huh. hope I'm not mispronouncing his last name. Was also there, and we got to see that on the Instagram story. Um, and and I feel like it's a cool. It, I feel like this this game today was probably for Koo. I, we haven't we didn't get a chance to talk to him, but it had to have been a cool full circle moment for him. You know, four years ago, he's run out of Los Angeles. He misses a game tying field goal, a game winning field goal. Chargers start zero and four. And then four years later, fresh off a of Pro Bowl year, in his third game of the season, he gets his first game-winning field goal, and it's tw- it's 12 miles away, a 15-minute drive from where he learned what football was in seventh grade, where he started playing football, and his coaches and teammates are in attendance. So it's like it must have been a great moment for him on top of everything, everything else. That's a wealth of knowledge about a <laughs> kicker, Chris, and I wonder why. <laughs> Shameless plug number one. Yes, big story coming soon this week. Yeah. This week on Young Way on staying at the top. Mm-hmm. He's determined to, you know, his journey coming here from South Korea in se- seventh grade and learning about football after he just kicked the ball at recess. And, you know, his he's he's driven. And I, I would say the more than driven, he's obsessed yeah. with never going back to the feeling he had. Because for two years, Young Way sat around and, you know, wondered, what am I doing in my life? Am I is football the right thing? And now he's one of the best kickers in the league. He has one of the largest followings for a kicker, 
and and not and then he's also you know a representation for a bunch of kids who don't see people who look like him in the National Football League. I think the, the percentage is point one percent Asian in the mm-hmm. league. So he's a superstar and you know a representation for a lot of kids who I think will strive to be like him. Yeah, we, we've we, we, we've talked about Young Way. We've talked for five minutes about <laughs> Kyle Pitts, right? In, in in the previous segment, what about Matt Ryan, who was just okay? Yeah. Early on, and then completed i don't have the stats in front of me like 11 of 12 or 12 of 13 or a very efficient clip as he's marching down the field to lead the falcons to two vital touchdowns this is a guy who's been there before he's made a bunch of clutch performances before his role as a calming influence he went into that final huddle and said we are going to win this game everyone do your job and only your job and then they went out and executed how vital is it to have Matty Ice in those situations. Super vital. I think having a guy like that is, especially for a young team like the Falcons, having a quarterback like that who's been there before, done it before, it doesn't matter how he played before the final drive. A minute, 50 seconds left on the clock. You have a thir- you know, 13-year, 14-year veteran on, on, on your team and a former MVP. You can almost lock that in and say that, that he's going to put you in the best position to succeed regardless of how he, he did during the day because I thought – if anything, I thought today's game I thought was maybe the the worst of the three so far for Matt this season. Yeah. Um. I think the first two games of the year he, uh, I thought a lot of the the offensive line struggles played a role in his numbers. But I thought today, his three sacks kind of resulted from him holding the ball a, a little bit too long, mm-hmm. and and yeah. So I, I thought to I thought up until that point he was struggling a little bit, and then for a minute and fifty seconds you saw why Matt Ryan is Matt Ryan. Yeah, and I, I think that when it comes down to it, the, these comeback drives came down to their most important players to this point. Yep. Kyle Pitts, Young Way Koo, who as a specialist is important, Matt Ryan, Jake Matthews, and, and, and Cordero Patterson on that big play in the right. flat. When it came to crunch time, their big players showed up. We're going to start the third quarter and spend five minutes not talking about the offense, which (laughs) really surged there at the end, but the defensive side of the football that had a bunch of nice moments and probably as important as anything, in between those touchdown drives, when they had to get a stop, they got a stop. And that included a third down play where the Falcons thought they got off the field and Fabian um, Moreau ended up with a defensive PI call that was questionable, but they stuck with it. They were able to get the punt that they needed and, and allow the offense to do, uh, do their thing. This wasn't a perfect performance from the offense. They gave up 346 yards at total offense, but what did you think of their performance? One. And two, do you think that it's better than what we've seen the, the previous two games? Yeah, I think it's definitely better than what we've seen the previous two games, but I also will say, if we're being honest, I, I think this is probably the well, would you say this is the worst offense they played? The worst offense that they played? Yeah. 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 I, yeah. For so sure. I, yeah. That's what I say. So I would say, taking it within that context, I think this is the worst offense they've played and um, a beat up team on the O line as well. But I thought the defensive line, I thought the defensive line looked very dominant today. Uh, that play when Grady Jarrett did that swim move oh my on gosh. I don't know, 68 is on the Giants. But yeah, he, Price he might, is the guy's Price, last name. Yeah, he might. <laughs> he literally, he was looking the complete opposite. It was like a video game the way it he was. Did, Grady faked him out and did the sp- did the swim move and uh, did we, I rewatched it on the on the big screen and then on the Fox broadcast again I was that that was cr- and then the sack he got you know his his first sack of the season and then I thought as far as run stoppage I thought they did a great an excellent job at slowing down um Saquon Barkley he only had 50 yards on the ground and I think he he and that was a large chunk of that he got on like a 15 yard run so for the most right. part it was all you know 2 to 4 yard gains and the only time we saw him even really out in space was when he would come off of a screen. So I thought on the run they did – I thought the D-line really stood out in the, in the linebackers. Um, and I think as far as containing Daniel Jones, they did a lot better at doing that than they did with Jalen Hurts. So I thought that was a strong point for the defense for sure. And, and yeah, I was just really impressed by how they approached the run. Yeah, and, and that's the foundation for any good defense. And that maybe is a sign that they – are continuing to get better. A, a guy who maybe isn't consistently standing out, but Dante Fowler, that's two straight games with a strip sack, right? Yep. And those are the types of things that you want. If 
you've got to get home more often if you're an edge rusher. But every time that he does it, he makes an impact. And I think that that's an important thing to see as we move forward. Last year, Dante Fowler had a terrible year. Right. I think he would tell you he had a terrible year. He, he was banged up. His uh, performance didn't meet his contract. Right. The, the guy takes a huge pay cut and stays here and I think is now trying to fight to reestablish himself as the edge rusher that – we saw when he was with the LA Rams. He likes Dean P's scheme and those types of plays. If you're going to make a sack, if you're going to get home, take the ball away. And that, that, that's something that uh, uh, Foyer uh, Aluakan does a lot. We saw Isaiah Oliver keep showing up. And, you know, Tori actually wrote about yeah. this during the week. <laughs> Sub, Tori. Uh, <laughs> basically saying it's time for Falcons fans to give Isaiah Oliver. And I'm sorry. Right. And yet again, he he showed it. He's becoming a pretty solid player in the slot. Yeah, for sure. And I think, you know, I think also the the players in that secondary. Also, I mean, from from Eric Harris to Fabian, as you mentioned, and Ron, and and, and whoever, and all, all the all the secondary in general. I think when we talk to them during the week, they're a very tight knit group. Mm -hmm. And I think they help guys like that. You know, the Isaiah Olivers of the world who maybe are struggling and. You know, from fans or social media who are telling them that they aren't so well, it keeps you grounded, and then it keeps you. It, it helps you when you're, you know, to have games like this. And I think if, if you know, if Isaiah just continues to build off of that, I think the secondary can be legit. Um, I would definitely like to see how they look against a because the Giants wide receivers were, were banged up today. Yeah. Um. So I would definitely like to see before I evaluate. You know, I think he played well today, but I think before we make any. Kind of bold statements, Bold right? statements. I think I definitely want to see them. Uh, I get next week against Washington. Uh, Terry McLaurin. That'll be that'll be a, a test. <laughs> yeah, if the, uh, for sure. <laughs> and and that's going to be a test against the run with uh, Anthony Gibson for sure. And you know, so it's it's going to be interesting to see Antonio, how. I think. Yeah, to, you, Antonio, you're right. Yeah. Um, to see how they pivot here. I think it was a step in the right direction. I just look at it and I think, okay, they need to keep doing better because while they beat the Giants in this way. I can count a lot of teams where we may be sitting here having a different discussion. For sure. Right? So I think that starts defensively. But the important thing is what you said. It starts with good run defense. We saw better against a good back. There's no taking that away from them as they continue to move forward and try to build off of what they did here against the Giants. And we're starting the fourth quarter with five minutes to talk about what this game means in the context of the 2021 season. Because if they don't, build off of what they did, if they don't take this clutch play at the end and find a way to use that confidence as fuel to execute well in the future, it was just one happy Sunday. And that's not going to be good enough because there's a lot of Sundays left. So how can the Falcons build on this moving forward? How can this have a lasting effect on on what they do throughout the course of a three-game stretch of winnable games, Giants, Washington, and, and the Jets, and on forward uh, throughout the season. How can this game mean more than just a singular event? I think taking – just using the confidence you gained from this from this game in the future. So guys like Cameron – how do I pronounce Cameron's last name? Nizielek. Nizielek. Okay. I think. Sorry, Cameron. Uh, but uh, yeah, the guys like Cameron is like, what we saw we saw from him. He was one. Of, he was he was really key in today's game in terms of pinning the Giants back, especially the game he had last week. You know, it was first it was reported that he he might be getting cut, and then it was then the then he didn't get cut, but the Falcons brought in Dustin Colquitt, and that's a lot of pressure, especially a guy who was also in the AAF with mm -hmm. with Koo, um on you to to perform, and he really stepped up today to perform. So a guy like that. Specifically, taking com taking confidence and, and keeping that moving forward, but I think also understanding that I think staying level, mm -hmm. like okay, we got to win, we're one and two, but that was a banged up team, and we struggled. We j we barely got we barely got away with the win. I think uh, uh, looking at the win honestly, not not saying that the win doesn't mean anything, appreciating the win and, and taking your strengths, but also looking, you know, we can be a lot better. We're a lot better than I think a game. I think the Falcons are a lot better than a game winning field goal. Um, in in a game like this today, um, so I think taking the positives, but also looking at at what what they did wrong and what they can be better at. And I think there's many things. I think moving forward, obviously, we we need to see more of what we saw in the fourth quarter, targeting targeting Kyle. I think even with just getting the ball in in your stars' hands, absolutely on, on the offensive end. You know, even even with Cal, design something for for Calvin if if you know he's being smothered. Design something for Kyle. Get Cordero ball. Mike Davis. Just, just get get your stars the ball. 
and defensively, the defensive line, it starts with them. Yeah. And play with that confidence that they showed today, and then good things happen on the back end. Yeah, it, I, I think Arthur Smith had a, a very honest and very candid that's the same word, but uh, that he, <laughs> he was very good in his press conference at both acknowledging this could be a big moment for our program. Yeah. In that the 2020 Falcons were three and seven in one score games, they gave up leads like a lot of them, and so you have that problem. Now this is a totally different regime, totally different coach. It's tough to link those two, but there needs to be a break between what has happened recently over the last two or three seasons and what will happen moving forward in the Arthur Smith regime. And he kept preaching belief and confidence, and that's you want to say that you want to establish that mentality. But until you go out and execute it, it doesn't mean a lot to me. A twenty-point loss doesn't mean a lot to me, right? right. Um, because you know. Because the third quarter against the Bucks was good, but I, I think that he talked a lot about that, and most importantly, he came back at the end of his press conference and said, "Look, we have a lot to improve, and we know that it d- that doesn't change because we, we we won. That's the name of the game, and that's what we're preaching: growth and improvement. Hopefully, we see that again this week. We have the right mindset. This will say more about us than anything else. This performance and and what they do next." Right. I don't think we're in a situation where we have to wonder if the Falcons' heads are going to get too big for themselves. They're right. still one and two. Everything yeah. you've said about the Giants is, is true. But how? what's the best way moving forward? How do they respond to this so they can come out and give themselves a chance and maybe beat Washington, and now we're talking two and two? Yeah, I think it's starting by saying the right things. To, yeah. And I think I think Coach Arthur Smith is saying the right things. At least he's saying it to the, to the media, at least. But like I said earlier, I think – Taking from this, just keeping that confidence, keeping that that swag, that toughness that you get from that win. You know, like I said last week, they looked defeated after that pick that Matt threw after he the defensive line in that third quarter last week. The game was the game was over after that. They were only mm-hmm. down ten or I think they were down ten or nine, but the right. game was over. Yeah, you know, uh, he the 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 image was of him face red. He screamed it explicit, <laughs> explicit, and the game was over from that point. So just taking the confidence, I think that's that's the utmost thing. If you, what's gay? If you feel good, you put whatever, whatever the, the saying. Feel good, play good, do better. Something like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if you feel good and you just have that confidence every week that we we are that team, then oftentimes you play better. So just taking that confidence and building on it. Yeah, I think that's going to be key moving forward and key to the Falcons doing better than what they showed early in this season and trying to build some positive momentum against beatable teams heading into a bye, and then you never know how, like what can transpire. You start playing better than the sum of your parts. And that'll do it for another episode of the Falcons Final Whistle podcast brought to you by Windows 11. Thanks again to Microsoft for coming on board. We're so excited to have them on there. The Falcons fans should be excited by what they saw here at MetLife Stadium, earning a 17-14 to 14 victory. And you, you all know what to do next, right? Go back, subscribe on iTunes, Spotify. Give us a, a rating. We'd prefer it to be five stars. Yes, yes. Give us a good review. We'd <laughs> yes. prefer it to be nice, especially to Scott and Chris. Yeah, especially, Tori, you, uh, especially you, Timmy Turner. Uh, Timmy, yeah. Stimmy Turner, excuse me. Yep, yep, Stimmy Turner. Uh, and, yeah, so do all those things and download this thing on a regular as we take you through this Falcon season, what you saw, and what it means for the future. That's our goal each and every week, and we look forward to coming to you Next week, from home, finally, when the Falcons play the Washington football team. Talk to you next week.